You're listening to Tim Bulkley's 5-Minute Bible. Who is the audience for Genesis? Part 2. Children? When I did the first in the series on who is the audience for Genesis, a number of people in their comments expressed, probably based on the picture I chose as background, surprise and disappointment that I didn't address the question of children as the audience of Genesis. So, that's what I'm going to do now. Before I get round to what difference it makes if we think of children as a possible audience for Genesis, I, I need to convince myself and you that children are a possible audience for Genesis. So, firstly, let me do the opposite and, and say to you that I don't think children are the primary audience of Genesis. There's evidence in the book itself that they're not, if only in the way in which the book uses a pretty wide vocabulary, larger than some other Bible books. For that reason alone, it seems to me that the primary audience of Genesis is not children. It's not a children's book. But beyond that, there is very, very little, if any, direct evidence from the book itself as to what age of person the book envisages to read it. Elsewhere in the Bible, there's bags of evidence that Israel's story, and Israel's story begins in Genesis, remember, with Jacob, who is renamed Israel, that Israel's story is to be told to all ages. It's to be told not only to you and your friends, but to your children and your children's children, to the next generation and the one after. And so, clearly, an audience for Genesis is your children and your grandchildren, if grandchildren you have yet, your potential grandchildren. That's abundantly clear in the book of Deuteronomy. Moses' speech in chapter 4 begins by setting that out as one of the important pieces of groundwork. Tell this to your children and your grandchildren. Not just the laws, but the stories too, the events that happened. Same thing in chapter 6, the chapter that presents the kind of declaration that Israel must make. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. That chapter. Tell it to your children and your grandchildren. Or move into the New Testament and think of the story of young Jesus in the temple. Not yet of age to speak in public. Not yet 13, but only 12. And yet there is no sign in the story that anyone found it odd that he should be there listening and even perhaps asking questions. What they found odd was the, the wisdom and perception of his questions, not the fact of a child being present. When Israel's story is told, children and grandchildren are there. So Genesis is a book. It's the book that begins the telling of Israel's story. Genesis is a book whose audience includes children. On the other hand, let's notice in Genesis the presence of stories that, at least in our modern world, we'd regard as thoroughly unsuitable for children. There are stories that would not be classified as suitable for all ages by our film classification boards. Stories full of violence, Noah's Ark, with its tale of extreme genocide. Not at all a story for children. The story of Dinah's brothers and their violence, leaving aside entirely the question of whether Dinah's sleeping with the Canaanite boy was rape or not. The story of Laban's sheep involves breeding, as does the story of Judah and Tamar, and that, in that case, human breeding. Stories that, if told to children, require at least a little explanation. And what about Joseph and Potiphar's wife? Imagine the questions you'll get when you tell it. Children are an audience for Genesis. We can assume that they're present when the book is read. But there are stories that need explaining. This very fact is educational. Stories that need explaining involve questioning, and questioning involves answers. And sure, when Genesis is read to children, some of the deeper connections and the more profound meaning won't be spotted straight away. But then, do adults spot all the connections and the profoundest meaning straight away? I know I don't. And then if children are in the audience for Genesis, 
we have a profound and powerful reminder that these stories are not merely collections of facts. They're not about information. They are about wonder and laughter because children's stories ought to evoke wonder and laughter. And if Genesis includes children in its audience, it too should evoke wonder and laughter and not a mere cataloguing of facts. You see, asking the question, who's the audience for Genesis? And in particular, are children included in that audience? Provokes some really quite profound recognitions about the nature of the book and about how we should respond to it. God bless.